Hey, good morning, brothers and sisters. Today's Friday, January 17th. It is 6.12 a.m. I'm going to welcome you back to A Beacon of Light. I'm Brother Anthony. And today we're going to read Hosea chapter 2. So, a re quick recap of chapter 1. We read about uh, Hosea taking up a wife of harlotry. Her conceiving him three children, a son named Jezreel, a daughter named Lo Ruhama, a another son named Lo Ami, and it was a a short verse, but I want to start from chapter one verse ten or chapter 1, verse 11, and then read into chapter 2, because they're both connected. And we'll finish chapter 2 today. So, chapter 1, verse 11 on. You ready? I uh, ask for a special blessing to be upon the reading, upon the hearing, and upon applying God's word. And may the Holy Spirit help you to understand the words that are coming off these pages. So here we go. 111. Then the children of Judah and the children of Israel shall be gathered together and appoint for themselves one head, and they shall come up out of the land, for great will be the day of Jezreel. Say to your brethren, my people, and to your sisters, mercy is shown. Bring charges against your mother, bring charges. For she is not my wife, nor am I her husband. Let her put away her harlotries from her sight, and her adulteries from between her breasts, lest I strip her naked, and expose her as in the day she was born, and make her like a wilderness, and set her like a dry land, and slay her with thirst. I will not have mercy on her children, for they are the children of harlotry, for their mother has played the harlot. She who conceived them has behaved shamefully, for she said, I will go after my lovers, who will give me bread and my water, my wool and my linen, my oil and my drink. Therefore, behold, I will hedge you up, I will hedge up your way with thorns and wall her in, so that she cannot find her paths. She will chase her lovers, but not overtake them. Yes, she will seek them, but not find them. Then she will say, I will go and return to my first husband, for then it was better for me than now. For then it was better for me than now. For she did not know that I gave her grain, new wine, and oil, and multiplied her silver and gold, which they prepared for Baal. Therefore I will return and take away my grain in its time, and my new wine in its season. And I will take back my wool and my linen, given to cover her nakedness. Now I will uncover her lewdness in the sight of her lovers, and no one shall deliver her from my hand. I will also cause all her mirth to cease, her feast days, her new moons, her sabbaths, and all her appointed feasts. And I will destroy her vines and her figs, of which she said, These are my wages that my lover has given me. So I will make them a forest, and the beasts of the field shall eat them. I will punish her for the days of the Baals to which she burned incense. She decked herself with earrings and jewelry and went after her lovers. But me she forgot, says the Lord. Oh my God, that gave me some chills right there. This is some really good stuff. We're in verse 14, <clears throat> which shows God's mercy on his people. Therefore, behold, I will allure her, will bring her into the wilderness and speak comfort to her. I will give her vineyards from there and, and the valley of Accor as a door of hope. She shall sing there, as in the days of her youth, 
as in the days when she came up from the land of Egypt. And it shall be in that day, says the Lord, that you will call me my husband, and no longer call me my master. For I will take from her mouth the name of the Baals, and they shall be remembered by their name no more. In that day I will make a covenant for them with the beasts of the field, with the birds of the air, and with the creeping things on the ground. Bow and sword of battle I will shatter from the earth to make them lie down safely. I will betroth you to me forever. Yes, I will betroth you to me in righteousness and justice, in loving kindness and mercy. I will betroth you like the to me in faithfulness, and you shall know the Lord. It shall come to pass in that day that I will answer, says the Lord. I will answer the heavens, and they shall answer the earth. The earth shall answer with grain, with new wine, and with oil. They shall, they shall answer Jezreel. Then I will sow her for myself in the earth, and I will have mercy on her who had no, not obtained mercy. Then I will say to those who were not my people, You are my people, and they shall say, You are my God. Amen. That is some really, really deep words right there. Let's go ahead and break down a few of these uh, verses, you know. I'm starting to see the bigger picture as I'm reading these words. You know, uh, God is, is he's, he's saying, read, read between the lines. So let's see. All right. Chapter 2, verse 1. Brethren, it says, Say to your brethren and to your sisters, God would mercifully restore his covenant relationship with his people, reversing the judgment symbolized by the names Lo Ruhama and Lo Ami. Lo Ruhamaha for I will means for I will no longer have mercy on the house of Israel, but I will utterly take them away, and Lo Ami which uh, means for you are not my people and I will not be your God. <clears throat> so God is letting the people know that even though you separate yourself from me, even though you put me on the back burner, even though you keep turning away from me to other gods, I'm going to redeem you. I'm going to give you that chance and bring you back to myself. <clears throat> Verse 2 talks about bringing charges. The Lord formerly accused Israel of unfaithfulness to the covenant. Alright, so I will bring charges against your mother. Bring charges. Your mother refers to the sinful nation of Hosea's time, symbolized by Gomer in verses 1, 2, and 3. She is not my wife. This may be a formal, formal announcement of divorce or a realistic confession that the relationship between God and Israel had lost its vitality. Because, <clears throat> you know, once we accept Christ into our lives and are baptized, we come into a marriage agreement with Christ. But you see here that God says, For she is not my wife nor am I her husband. You know, I want a divorce. He's basically saying that. So chapter 2, verse 3, Lest I strip her naked and expose her as in the day she was born, and make her like a wilderness, and set her like a dry land, and slay her with thirst. The Lord warned that he might publicly humiliate his unfaithful wife by stripping her naked. Uh, you can also see a footnote in a, or a, a part of this in Ezekiel 16, 35 through 43. And we'll go ahead and jump into this good meat. <clears throat> so verses 4 and 5. Um, her children refers to the Israelites who live in the, lived in the land. Though the mother... 
the land and the children, the inhabitants of the land, are distinct in Hosea's metaphor. Both actually refer to the sinful nation. The Lord warned that he might disown the children because they were a reminder of their mother's unfaithfulness. <laughs> so you see, I'm going to read this here quick. I will not have mercy on her children, for they are the children of harlotry, for their mother has played the harlot. She who conceived them has behaved shamefully, for she said, I will go after my lovers, my addictions, other gods, things of the world, things that, that, that I give and, and it pays out, things that I can see, that I can grasp. I will go after my lovers, who will give me my, give me my bread and my water, my wool and my linen, my oil and my drink. Therefore, behold, I will hedge up her way with thorns, and wall her in, so that she cannot find her paths. She will chase her lovers, but not overtake them. Yes, she will seek them, but not find them. Then she will say, I will go and return to my first husband, for then it was better for me than now. I've been on that road. I've been wandering through the streets at night, knowing, saying it in my head, these drugs... This life is not for me. I need to go back to my first love. I need to find God. I need to find Christ. <coughs> Verse 8. For she did not know that I gave her grain, new wine, and oil. See, back then I was so lost in my mind that I didn't know that every blessing I had came from God. Every single thing that led me to being a 40-year-old man was a blessing from God. When everyone around me was dying, friends were dying at the age of 18, at the age of 19. You know, people were dying and being uh, sent off to prison for life. But God had his hand on me. God had his hand on you. God led you to where you are today to come and watch this video. And he wants you to know that he's always been there. He wants you to know that even when you turned your back on him, he was still there with his hand on you. Verse 9. Therefore I will return and take away my grain in its time and my new wine in its season. And I will take back my wool and my linen given to cover her nakedness. You know, you know that's what he's saying right there. I will take, since you don't want to follow me, I'm going to go ahead and uncover you and expose everything that you're doing wrong. You know, I put on this new wool to cover your sin, but you don't want to follow me? Okay, I'm going to take it right back. Verse 10, Now I will uncover her lewdness in the sight of her lovers, and no one shall deliver her from my hand. It will also cause her all her mirth to cease, her feast days, her new moons, her Sabbaths, and all her appointed feasts. You know, everything that, that all this stuff that she had planned, I'm going to wreck it. I'm going to wreck it like my name was Wreck-It Ralph. I don't know why that came in my head right now. And I will destroy her vines and her fig trees, of which she said, These are my wages that my lover has given me. You know, all that fruit, all that fruit. <clears throat> that you obtained while serving the enemy, that bad fruit, I'm going to cut those vines. I'm going to smash that fruit. I'm going to make sure that no one else will be harmed by your bad influence. And I will destroy her vines and her fig, fig trees, of which she has said, These are my wages that my lover has given me. So I will make them a forest and the beasts of the feet filled shall eat them. I will punish her for the days of the Baals to which she burned incense. She decked herself with earrings and jewelry and went after other her lovers, but me she forgot, says the Lord. You see, how many times have you walked this this life chasing after things that you shouldn't chase after and forgot that God was there? God, he, he wants you he wants you to know that he's there. That even when you're out there serving falseness, serving 
other things than him. He wants you to know that he still has his hand on you. Verse 21 says, It shall come to pass in that day that you turn back to me that I will answer, says the Lord. I will answer the heavens <clears throat> and they shall answer the earth. The earth shall answer with grain, with new wine, and with oil. They shall answer Jezreel. Then I will sow her for myself in the earth, and I will have mercy on her who had not obtained mercy. Then I will say to those who were not my people, You are my people, and they shall say, You are my God. You see, God loves you. God loves you so much that he's willing to sacrifice himself for you. God loves you so much that he'll still have his hand on you while you're serving the enemy. You know, God is a loving God. And there's not pretty much more I can say about that, but, uh, this is a, a chapter I have not read yet. <clears throat> but God is showing me great things as I read, as we learn from each other, as we try to dissect these verses. But I hope that uh, Israel returns to God because I don't want to be divorced from Christ. I don't want to be stuck in my old ways. I don't want to live a life where I can't have Jesus. I don't want to continue to be a uh, a hypocrite like I was. One who had one foot in, one foot out. I want to walk fully with God. And I want to line up everything I do to His will. For my life. Like it says here. And it shall be. Verse 16. And it shall be in that day says the Lord. The day that you return to me. The day that we make a covenant with each other. That you will call me my husband. And no longer call me my master. For I will take from her mouth the name of the Baals. And they shall be remembered by their name no more. You know, the thoughts that go on in my head from my drug use, from my gang life, from my criminal history, from the way I used to be before I fully surrendered to Christ, it still goes on in my head. All these thoughts, all these dreams still rack my mind. But it says here, for I will take from her mouth the name of those false things and they shall be remembered by their name no more. You know, I pray that Jesus, I pray God that you just heal my thoughts, that you heal my mind, that you take away the name of those bad things out of my life for good, that you continue, Lord God, to, to help those who, who seek after you because we know, Father, that your hand is upon us. For you are our husband. For you are our Lord. And we love you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. So, brothers and sisters, I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish my coffee, get ready for work. I hope you guys have a blessed day. I'm going to go ahead and uh, tune in tomorrow for Hosea chapter 3. So, God bless. I hope you guys learned something. See you later.